the section for the circle, and I'm keeping this basic, right? The section for the circle contained for being mortal. So we can look at this and see that this section for humans is contained entirely within the section of being mortal, right? So all humans are mortal is what this could represent, okay? If, if that concept you've already found a little difficult, then I do recommend you go back, watch the Venn diagrams, because you'll need at least that basic understanding in order for us to progress. That's as simple as I can make it. Okay, the next uh, image, what I'm going to do is I'm going to maintain the image of the Venn, the diagram, the circles, the Venn diagram, it's called Venn, V-E-N-N, -N, the Venn diagram. The Venn diagram for the second image is going to look exactly the same, however, we're going to tra change the wording a bit. The reason why I'm doing this is because I don't want you to obsess about the wording, right? It can, we can word this however we want. The wording is not what's important, as we'll see later. What's important is a recognition of what the Venn diagrams mean. People will have different ways of wording a particular Venn, but as long as the wording corresponds to the, the exact same image, the result, as we'll see in a second, is that the meaning is the same, right? So the next one would say, no human no humans um, are non-mortal, right? You could put immortal, but immortal is a different concept, so which would be fine, you know, just to keep it ghetto. But basically, it's saying there aren't any human beings located outside of the circle of mort mortal, right? There isn't a human being located here there isn't a human being located here, right? This is completely outside of the circle, but this is empty, right? So the space that humans occupy, this space here, is completely contained within mortality, so we can make the claim that no humans are non-mortal, right? No humans are non-mortal, meaning exactly the same as all humans are mortal, right? Okay, again, I'm trying to go slow, trying to go real basic. The point of this is the following, right? The statement right underneath it, all humans are mortal, is equivalent to the statement, no humans are, are non-mortal, because obviously they share exactly the same Venn diagram, right? These two statements are equivalent. They're equivalent because they have the same Venn. Right? They're equivalent because they have the same Venn. Right? So they're equivalent because they have the same Venn. You can word it differently. All humans are mortal. No humans are non mortal. Same Venn. I think we get the idea. The whole point of that is to initially set the tone. I don't want to obsess about words. Right? What we're going to do is we're going to be thinking conceptually. And I want to set the stage for what is going to, in the end, this is really, hopefully, this is really, really basic, hopefully boringly basic, but you'll be surprised at how complex we'll be able to take it if you just follow along with the lecture slowly. Okay, so there are four states that I want to identify in this next example, right? So there's four things that I want to identify, and insofar as we identify, we're going to try and make sense of these relationships, right? So what I want to do is I want to draw, draw um, not having to do with humans and mortality, four images. Okay, we have A and B, circles A and B. So we have circle A over here, circle B. Circle A over here, circle B. Circle A over here, circle B, and finally circle A over here, circle B. Okay. In the first example, right, and we'll label these uh, numbers, right? This is one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. Okay. And actually, I'm going to need some space, so I'll erase this little bit right here. I don't really need. Okay. So, in one, 
um, we want to completely shade in circle A, right? So that all, the entirety of circle A is shaded in, including the overlap with B. Right? So this is A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. The complete circle of A is shaded in, including the overlap of B. I'll explain it later. This one, the complete circle of B is shaded in, including the overlap with A. The one beneath it, there's an X. Something occupies the space in A. And then this one, there's an X in, in B. Something occupies the space in B. Then we have arrows connecting these two and diagonal arrows connecting these two. And that's, that's the image we have, okay? So the entire circle A, including the section that overlaps B, is shaded in. The entire circle B, including the section that overlaps A, is shaded in. There is something that occupies space in B, and there's something that occupies space in A. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to identify these states, right? And I'm going to change my color. The first is represented by the claim that everything is B. Remember, we said if you see that the circle is shaded in, it means it's empty. Nothing is in that area. So th since nothing is in the area B, uh, uh, in the area A, it's saying basically that the only thing that there is is B, right? Nothing is in A. Only B is occupied. Remember, we're not worried about, as I showed you in the example, the wording, how you want to word it. We're not going to get petty. We just want to make sure that, I just want to make sure that you have an understanding of the concept. So simply, we're just going to label number one as everything is B. Every T-H-I-N, T-E-V-E-R-Y-T-H-I-N-G. Everything is B. And the one right across it, and obviously we're, we're doing this with respect to B, right? Uh, all of the way that we're going to be wording it is going to be with respect to B. I could word this differently, but I want to word it with respect to B. So with respect to B, everything is B. With respect to B, what would we say here? Well, the entire circle, the entire Venn of B is empty. So nothing is B, right? In that circle, and that's where you're right. You could also alternatively say everything is A, but we're going to do it with respect to B. So nothing is B. Just real simple, right? Real simple. No need to get technical. I don't like how that looks. So this is everything's B. Okay. So this number one is everything is B. Um, number three is nothing is B. Number two is, well, something occupies the circle in B, right? Something occupies, there is something occupying B in this position, right? So something's in B, right? Something is B. Something is B. And then lastly, um, in example number four, Something is not, remember we're doing it with respect to B, something is not B. Here's where B is, here's the overlap of B and A, and this is basically saying something is not B. Is not B. Okay, so one, all with respect to B, and there's many different ways that you can word this, and there's different variations, I don't, if you understand, where this is going, don't jump ahead because I might not be doing what you think I'm doing. I'm probably not doing what you think I'm doing. At least not yet. In this example, everything is B. That should make sense because we're saying the entire circle A, remember, if it's shaded in, it means it's empty. So all of A is empty, therefore the only thing that exists is B. So everything is B. In this example, what we're saying is all of B is shaded in, including the overlap with A. There is no B, so we make the claim nothing is B. In this example, we're saying that there's an X there which represents that something exists in B, right? There is 
something that exists in B, we say something.